Hi there, this is Linda and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. In this video, I'm putting together my project life spread for the week of February 27th through March 5th, 2023. And I'm working with the label story kit. If you're curious about my planning process with the label story kit, I do have a video up on the Allie Edwards blog sharing my entire process for planning out all of the projects I want to create with this kit, including this spread here and another project life spread that I will hopefully do in the next few weeks. So without anything else to say, let's go ahead and dive in. is a quarterly scrapbook kit so it's not particularly designed for project life but I am thinking that I want to use it in project life because let's see actually I'm trying to decide how I want these laid out because um I just love project life and I actually think that although these kits are not made for project life they work really well in project life so my first step here is I'm just kind of laying out my photos and trying to come up with, you know, how I really want things arranged on my page as just a basic start before I pull out my kit. So I have this where I did my plan, my planning with the labels scrapbook kit. And if you missed that, I had a whole video sharing that over on the Allie Edwards blog. And I will link that down in the description box below in case you wanted to see my process for planning with this kit. From looking at these sketches, which I know are super rough, <laughs> I have two project life plans and I decided to go with this one. So this loose plan here basically says I'm gonna work with this paper and this paper in my spread. So my thought with this is that I'm going to cut these out and I'm going to put them on cards to hold six stories. So I made a note here, I wanna tell six stories um, and I wrote out some ideas for the stories. I kind of had, um, seven and some of them could be combined. So I'm going to kind of work with that as I figure out what stories I want to tell, but I'm going to do six stories with these. And then I'm going to, originally I was thinking I would put these on like four by six cards, but you know, as you've probably seen, if you've been watching any of my Project Life videos this year, I'm working in this nine by 12 size and there's just so many more of the three by four pockets. And I could have chosen to do another one like, like this layout on this side and have the six four by six pockets, but that's just not how I'm taking my photos these days. And then doing that, you really only end up with six pockets per side. And I feel like that's just not really enough for me. So I, I do Project Life Weekly and I know like a lot of people think what's going on in your life, like you don't, if there's not a lot going on, a lot of people struggle to fill out a whole spread. But for me, there's always so much I want to include, even like the little stories. Like I don't have that much going on in my life. My life is generally pretty boring and pretty repetitive, but I find joy in it because I find all these little stories that I want to tell and grab all these like little photos and everything of random things. And you can see here on this spread, you know, I have three photos of food. I have some photos of the weather, um, just some relaxing, um, something that is from a crafting thing I'm working on and my cat. Like there's nothing really exciting going on here, but I find a lot of joy in documenting these little details. So all that to say that I wanted more pockets. I wanna be able to include more photos, more stories and more products because I do have a lot of products that I wanna use up. So I was originally thinking that these would not fit on a three by four card, but then I realized I could turn them vertically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fussy cut each of these out. I'm gonna put you guys on fast forward for that. And then I'm going to back them on this paper, which I'm gonna cut down into these, of these pocket sizes. Um, and I'm going to use it, I think I'm going to do, so I might, I'm thinking about, I was originally gonna do six stories. And then I think that two of these can combine, actually two sets can combine so that I can make it down to five stories. And then one of these could be a title card. And then that leaves me with a title card and then one, two, three, four, five, and one extra. 
So what I'm thinking I might do is find a filler card from my stash just to kind of stash bust a little bit, right? I could just use, you know, maybe this pattern paper and put, you know, something else from the kit. Like there were these, these fun strips. I could use these. Uh, if you wanted to just stick with the kit, I could use some more labels. Um, or I could use like one of the more decorative papers as like a filler card. And there were definitely ones with more like pronounced patterns on them, but I do want to kind of use up my stash. So I think I'm going to find a filler card in my stash that coordinates and I'm going to cut these out, tell my six or my five stories and my title card with my dates. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to include some stamping. So I have an alpha stamp set, which I have linked below that is like, um, there's this, like this wooden stamp set. Here it is. And I absolutely love this. I've been using it in my journaling a lot and it was just upside down. So, um, and it's got the capitals, the lowercase numbers, symbols. And I love this set because first of all, I love the font and the size, but I also love that I have the uppercase, the lowercase, all the symbols and all the numbers, because if you're someone who loves alpha stamping, which if you've been following me for a while, you must know that I absolutely love alpha stamping is very hard to find a set that has all of these. Usually you have just uppercase or just lowercase. Often you don't have the numbers and the letters in the same font, and you often are missing some of the symbols. So this one has like everything that a keyboard would have pretty much. I mean, I guess you don't have like an asterisk or like the more uncommon ones, but you've got a period, which I know is missing all the time, a quotation mark, we even have a parenthesis, an ampersand, colon, like there's a lot of options on here. So I can write pretty much everything um, that I want. And um, I guess the one thing that is missing that I'm always looking for is a comma or an apostrophe, but there's this little like dash which could be used or the period could also be used as an apostrophe because that's one that I always am searching for in um, alphas because a lot of times you want to stamp like contractions or possessive um, words that need an apostrophe. So I'm going to, I think, stamp like titles on all of these and I might even do some stamping on some of my photos. I have a lot of white space here or like here that I might do a little bit of stamping, but I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on fast forward. I think I'm going to start by finding a card, a filler card that coordinates with this and the stories I'm telling at this point in time. Um, with this spread and then I'm going to go ahead put, and put the spread together. Okay, so I started by going over to my stash of cards, of Project Life cards and looking for one to use as a filler card. First, I went through my category of winter cards and I decided that none of those worked. So then I went through this category, which is like home slash relax. And I decided that I really liked that one. I pulled out a couple other ones as potential options, but I'm just kind of like trying them out to see what they look like with the photos and the colors. And I ended up going with this one that says, ready for a bit more ease, which I believe is from an older stories by the month, but it might've been from a story kit. I'm not sure, but it's definitely from Allie Edwards. And then I'm working on cutting out these shapes. You can tell when I'm working on this spread that I kind of jump around from what I'm working on because it gets a little repetitive doing the same thing over and over again. This entire spread is pretty repetitive and I really like working with a formula like this and putting together something that is very repetitive. It's kind of soothing. Um, so this entire spread took me about an hour to put together. I obviously have sped up a lot of the process for you. But it was about an hour and I watched an episode of Law & Order SVU while I worked on it. And it's really nice to just kind of follow this formula. And it's something that I do frequently in Project Life, especially when I'm trying to catch up on weeks. So you'll probably notice that I'm going to post a couple um, Project Life process videos a little close together, more closely together now than I normally would. And that's because I kind of fell a little bit behind on this project in January when I was working on my content for Plan, Prep, and Play. Um, and also when I went on vacation in February. So I'm just now kind of catching up. I like to work about um, one and a half weeks behind when I'm putting together a Project Life spread. In the past, I have had gaps where I go back and fill them in and I 
also have not finished 2022. So if you are working on this project and you are not um, that close in time, that's totally okay. Um, there are so many different ways to do it. But for me, I like to work on the more current weeks first. So that's why you see me working on these 2023 spreads, even though 2022 is not done. Um, I just kind of like the perspective I get in scrapbooking things that just happened. And it gives me the opportunity to kind of plan out my spreads as I'm living the week and select photos and stories that I want to jot down that go specifically with um, what I want to include or what products I'm using for that spread. So I have my sticky note here where I wrote out my stories and I had written down seven stories initially and I was kind of like pairing some of them together and I'm trying now to decide which ones are going to go with which photos. So you saw me kind of piling um, a journal card with a photo to kind of figure out what goes where and I do a ton of shifting in this spread um, before I get my final layout that I actually end up liking. I'm trying to balance the colors of the journaling spots, the colors of the cards, the ones that are on the photos, the ones that are more dark versus the ones that are more white. On the right-hand side there, you can see I have five photos. So I'm going to have to have some photos that are touching unless, of course, I put them in the corners and the center, but I didn't want to do that. So I knew I had to have some photos that were touching. And so I have the ones with white backgrounds touching the ones with a dark background which I think that provides a little more balance. So you can see here I'm pulling out the February stamp from the February Stories by the Month Kit for 2023. And I had a little trouble peeling the backer off. These The stamp was new. I hadn't used it yet. So I did practice stamping on another sheet of paper before I stamped it on my title card here. I just wanted something with the dates because this label is very large for just these small rolling date stamps. So I wanted to add something else and that stamp that says the story worked perfectly. And you could tell like I don't really go through my stash looking for the perfect stamp for something like that. There really was no theme that I needed. So I didn't even pull out my stamp organization. I just thought, okay, this spread takes place in February. Let me see what's on that February stories by the month stamp. And if I didn't like anything on one of the stamps that, you know, was around this time frame of kits that came out, then I possibly would have gone to my stamp organization and looked for a stamp that had a general sentiment. But I typically use that more for when I'm looking for a stamp that's very specific or a specific shape or size um, and not really something that's just general like this. So now I'm figuring out what I'm going to stamp. So my thought was to stamp a short little like intro sentence on each of these label cards. And so I pull them all over and I end up stamping them all together. And so what I do is I write out the phrases that I want to stamp first on that piece of scratch paper. And that way I can kind of look at them as I'm stamping and stamp kind of in an assembly line. So you can see I'm stamping primarily stamping the first one, but I'm also adding letters to other ones if I have that stamp out already. And that just makes the process a little bit quicker. And, you know, to me, this is very therapeutic. I like stamping out large phrases and sentiments, but it does take a while. So this is a, one way that I make it a little bit quicker. And of course, like I said, I'm watching TV while I'm doing this. And of course, this part is sped up eight times speed. So it does definitely take a lot more time to stamp out phrases and words, but I think it's well worth it because I very much like the end result and I enjoy the process. So what I did was I just stamped a little sentiment on each one. So these were just kind of themes for the week. So I have one that says so much snow. We got a couple of snowstorms this week. There were two um, photos from that. There was a snow day um, and then another day that would have been a snow day, but it was a weekend. So I wrote about that on that so much snow card. And then I have a card that says I need sleep because I just kind of had some insomnia and a stressful week. So I journaled about that on that card. I have a, st a card that says baking cookies. And I journaled about how my daughter and I baked cookies one day. And then one that says I am crafting because that is just my story about all the projects I'm working on at this point in time. And then one that says writing a brief because that is about my work and what I was working on in my job where I'm an attorney. So I was writing a brief this week and it was due on Friday. So um, sometimes when I do my journaling for Project Life, I do kind of say, okay, this is what happened on Monday. This is what happened on Tuesday. But other times, and most of the time, I like to do it this way where I lump stories together by theme. So this so much snow theme, for example, this story talks about the snow this week. Now, 
there was a snowstorm Monday night that went into Tuesday, which caused my daughter to have a snow day off of school and caused me to switch my telecommuting days at work. And there was a snowstorm on Friday night going into Saturday, and it snowed all day Saturday, and we got eight inches of snow. So these are different stories that happened at different times throughout the week, but I lumped them together on this one card that's just about snow. And I like doing these theme-based stories for Project Life rather than just saying, okay, this is what happened Monday on one card, and this is what happened on Saturday on another card. But you can totally approach it in multiple ways, and this is just kind of my favorite right now. So I finished or I didn't finish my journaling, but my hands started to get tired. So I decided to take a break from journaling and I decided I wanted to add more stamping onto my photos. A lot of the photos in this spread really lend themselves well to stamping. Um, you can't see it so well on the video, that one with the photo of my dinner there, but I stamped out Healthy Eats. Um, some of the photos have more white space, so it was better to stamp on those ones. So I stamped on here, Snow Days. Um, on this one, I stamped baking on Saturday. And then on the laundry one, I stamped laundry helper for my cat sitting in the laundry. So I did kind of connect that same style onto my photos that I used on my journaling cards. And I help, think it just helps kind of tie the spread together a little bit more. On this card right here, I am stamping baking on Saturday. And I just want to point out that that is a total mistake. As I was doing my journaling, I realized that we actually baked cookies on Sunday. And I considered reprinting my photo, but why? It doesn't really matter which day we baked. We baked on the weekend. And so I just made a note of it in my journaling when I write about the baking cookies. I write, we baked, on Sunday, Summer and I baked chocolate chip cookies. And then in parentheses, I wrote, I accidentally stamped Saturday, but same idea. Because who really cares? The whole point was just to document that we baked cookies this week. And I journaled a little bit more about that experience and, you know, we were trying these new chocolate chips that didn't actually pan out to be very good, but it was fun to try them. So yeah, here's where I'm journaling that bit about, and I realized that I in fact did bake cookies on Sunday, but it doesn't really matter, right? So I really enjoyed this spread and how the stamping kind of ties everything together, but soon you will see I finish up all of my handwriting and I realized that I think that the spread is a little bit bland. Like it just seems a little bit flat with just stamping and paper and I wanted some extra embellishments. Um, I think that a lot of that is the fact that it is flat. flat. Stamps are flat um, by nature and so they are very good if you don't want bulk but in Project Life I think I like a little bit of dimension on my spreads. In certain projects, I don't want to mention, like if I'm working in a journal, but for Project Life, I do. So I pulled open my drawer with my to my chipboard organization, and I found these hearts. And they are white with little speckles, which kind of reminded me of winter, and I thought they went well with this spread. So I pulled out quite a few of them, and I'm just laying them out in various spots on some of the photos and on some of the journal cards, just to kind of bring in an extra embellishment and I end up putting four of them on the left hand side and three of them on the right which I think balances the spread a lot because it's an odd number which you kind of should always go with unless you're purposely doing a pattern with embellishments. Um, I think that these chipboard hearts were from Studio Calico but they are probably fairly old um, at this point. They've been in my stash for a while so I'm happy that I was able to kind of use them up. And I like that I found some fun spots to put it. Like I put one in the middle of my bowl of soup here. And I think that that was just a little bit of an extra fun piece. Now I'm just going ahead and slipping everything in the pockets, making sure I like the layout of where everything is located on the page. Um, and then a lot of these cards need trimming. I think it's this pocket page that has the nine three by four cards. For some reason, I feel like I always have to trim things down. I think that the pockets are not fully three by four or some of them are not three by four. And so they need to be trimmed a little bit more, which is totally fine. I'm just trimming everything a little bit so that it fits a little bit better into the pockets and then sliding it in place. I really love how the spread turned out. I think that it really came together nicely. And the label scrapbook kit was so well designed to go in Project Life. I know that I said this at the beginning of the video, these kits were not designed for Project Life, but they work very, very well for this style of documenting. And here's a look at that completed spread. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos. See you guys in the next one. Bye.